So next up is accelerated finishing. So uh, last year, the accelerated finishing technology started trickling into MasterCamp 2018, sort of a soft release of the technology. Uh, primarily, last year we were showing it uh, in the multi-axis tool paths. Uh, but basically, this is a whole new technology where the tool geometry is no longer limited to uh, flat end mill, bull nose, you know, ball, uh, tapered tool or tapered ball, but we can actually work with uh, things as complex as a circle segment cutter, uh, like the Amugi tools and other brands of tools that, that offer this style. Um, and there's a, a number of advantages to this tool shape. And I, so I tried to come up with just a couple of very simple examples to kind of illustrate that. Uh, and so, again, being able to apply this um, in just the mill product is, is kind of what we're focusing on here. Uh, so I'm trying to point out that, that uh, this does require surface machining, but as long as the surface that you're machining is a single surface or a single solid face, you can use just the mill product to machine things like, like that. So. Uh, this example, I'm going to kind of show you uh, some some prep work that I did to make this be one existing or one uh, surface so that I could apply just MasterCAM mill to cut this shape. I'm going to switch over to MasterCAM. All right, so as I'm loading files today, I'm just, I'm just taking uh, files straight out of uh, the file explorer, and I'm just going to drag them right onto the screen. So I'm going to take this example. I'm going to drag it onto the screen here, and we'll get this out of the way. All right. So uh, this example, I have a, a 2D high-speed dynamic milling uh, rougher that roughs that shape in. Uh, we'll look straight down from top view, and you'll see that this is actually a drafted shape. So it's a uh, drafted geometry, and in the original solid model, of course, most solid modelers would create this as individual faces, making that uh, a challenge to machine just using MasterCAM mill because you can't just select that solid model and say, cut it. But if you do a little bit of a crafty work with MasterCAM, you can make this happen. And so the way to make this happen is to take uh, the edge curves that were originally at the top here and merge those together into a single spline. So if I go to levels and uh, turn off the solid model, um, you'll see that I have created this surface. Uh, and you'll see at the very top, if I hover over this, this is one single spline. And so you can take uh, an edge curve, create curve on all edges, so into the wireframe menu create a curve on all edges, solid face, and that would have created a series of tangential arcs that go around here and match up with each one of those faces. Uh, you can then select those and then use spline from curves to convert the, those multiple entities into one curve. So one curve ends up being one surface if you draft it or loft it. So then I took this one continuous curve and I lofted that. Uh, actually, I used the uh, yeah I used the the loft and did it from the uh, from the top to the bottom uh, to create a single surface. So now you'll see if I hover over this, that's one surface there, which means I can apply the mill software without mill 3D to actually uh, perform this task. Because again, all of the different toolpath types under toolpaths in 3D, these are all available to you if uh, you're running mill but limited to a single surface. Uh, and in 2019 now, they also allow you to have an avoidance a machining feature as well as an avoidance feature. So if you look at this operation here, this waterline operation, and we open this up, you're going to see I'm in the uh, toolpaths waterline. Uh, I'm running the equivalent of the mill license. 
if I go to model geometry, I just have one face selected. And you'll see using the selection arrow down here, you make your selection. And so there's one entity selected here. It's this face. And then one avoidance here to keep the tool path from going down inside. And so the goal here is to apply this new uh, accelerated finishing. Um, and again, you know, when you're using Mill 3D, you're not having to take those extra steps to prepare anything. You would just click on the solid model and set set the parameters. Um, going into toolpath control, uh, just running with the defaults here. But when we get to tool, what I'm running here, um, let's get into the this, well, this, this second waterline toolpath, what this toolpath does is this steps in the shape with a regular flat end mill. So it's kind of like OptiRough, uh, but I'm running 2D dynamic to rough the shape from the rectangular billet of stock, come in with waterline, and then just start at the bottom and let it step up and start to form in this drafted shape. And then final waterline, here's where we actually apply the uh, accelerated finishing. And so it's just a standard waterline toolpath, except for it's running a barrel form tool. And so I'm going to uh, edit this tool so you can see what this looks like. So that's what this tool geometry actually looks like. You'll see it, it has a barrel shape to it. And there are new parameters in here for barrel form. And so you've got uh, the cutting diameter. You've got the overall length, cutting length, the profile radius the corner radius, shoulder length, shoulder diameter, shank, and then if there's any taper that blends from the shank down onto the, uh, onto the shoulder. And so, you know, why bother to use this tool? Well, think of it like this. If we were going to cut that tapered feature, um, say we're going to do that with a uh, just a standard tapered end mill, that matches the, the draft angle. Well, that's great. That works fine uh, as long as the corner radiuses of that shape, any internal corner features, are also tapered, just like the tool. If they're not and they're constant radiuses, it becomes a, a, quite a challenge. So this is actually um, gives you the flexibility to kind of cut uh, varying taper angles up to a certain range. And each one of these tool definitions in the catalog for these tools, it gives you the different slope angles that they're uh, capable of machining. So, you know, kind of looking at this shape, now if you think about this, if I was to, say, use a ball end now and step around this and step it down, going down with uh, passes, we might need to you know, maybe make something like, you know, 50, 50 or 60 passes to achieve a smooth uh, finish with the scallop height that we would like to accomplish. Um, whereas running something like a barrel form, we might only need 10 or 12 passes. So, you know, you could literally uh, cut your machining time down to 20% of what it originally was. It's dramatic. Uh, we've done some testing, cut some different parts that way. You get an exceptional finish. And uh, remember that this also works in the opposite condition, down in a pocket uh, with tapered walls. Um, so it's, it's really a, a great solution, and it's, an, it's a huge uh, performance gain over what we might typically do with ball end mills. So just kind of showing you what this looks like. We'll just run this through and simulate this. It's easier to look at in simulation. Uh, so I'm going to go into uh, select all the operations. We'll go into the Mastercam simulator. We'll launch that. So I'm, I'm running the, uh, the standard simulation here to start with. I'm going to bring this over. Of course, you could run the machine simulation verify if you'd like to run that as well. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to go into view. Um, sync views is turned off. That gives you a little better performance if you're not trying to drag around both screens at the same time. And uh, so we've got this up. Uh, we're going to use a uh, workpiece focus. So our view will be focused on the workpiece, and the tool will be moving around the part. Um, 
and then we'll go in here and we'll turn on the workpiece and then we'll set stock to translucent so we can kind of see what this looks like a little bit better. So uh, first operation, we'll come down here and, and I'm just going to uh, advance this through the, uh, the 2D uh, dynamic and we'll just kind of fast forward that through. So that's what it looks like after 2D dynamic and you'll see, you know, you've got this extra material here. Um, then we'll go ahead and we'll advance it again. And then after this operation, that same tool comes back around and it'll step that shape up. So now you can see uh, with 15,000 extra material and making 150,000 step ups just using a, a waterline tool path, uh, things are in pretty good shape now to apply the accelerated finishing. So I'm going to kind of slow this down a little bit and we'll watch this run. Uh, and again, this is just a standard waterline tool path, but you uh, applying this barrel cutter and uh, we'll talk more about the tools here in a minute. So we'll hit play here and now you'll see um, that, you know, you're getting this big swath of a cut uh, using this barrel and it's really producing an amazing finish uh, for only taking, what do we got there, maybe eight passes. Um, and so the scallop height in here is, uh, is equal to what you would be getting by using a ball end mill, uh, you know, with steps more around the 20 to 30 thousandths range uh, because of how large the radius is on the side of the tool. And another thing to point out here is that the uh, master cam is not just uh, aware of this bigger radius, it also understands the corner radius. So if you drive down onto some geometry, uh, it knows and understands this radius down here on the end as well, and it will comp that just the same as it comps the, the big radius. So it's a, a very complex, uh, it basically uh, are kind of a rewrite to MasterCam's uh, tool compensation engine to be able to accommodate uh, these accelerated uh, finishing type tools, so barrel forms and uh, oval and lens shapes and all these different shapes. Uh, so we're going to talk now just a, a little bit more about the tools and where you can get these tools. So uh, for the brand Amugi, their libraries are available for download from the mastercam.com tech exchange. And so you can go download these and I'll show you, I have these downloaded on my system. So if we open this up and we go to select library tool, and go to uh, attach a different library. I've already got those downloaded. And there's a, a Mugi Circle Segment Inch Tool uh, database file that you can download. And there's also Mugi's Torquoidal Tools, which would be uh, their brand of uh, tools that you would use for the dynamic milling. So uh, you can get those and it has a, you know, a, a nice variety of their tools in there. So let's actually, let's open that library up real quick. So let's take the circle segment. We'll open that up and then uh, turn off the filter here. So you've got, let me get this into a different list. And here we'll select, whoops, all types and filter let's see here that's not displaying that list let's go into the tool manager tool manager let's attach the library here circle segment and we'll just pull these up into the this file I just want to open up a few of these and kind of show you uh, what some of these look like. So in particular, I'm going to show you this lens form tool. So the lens form is kind of the opposite where the big radius is down on the very end of the tool. And it, it only has uh, cutting capabilities up a uh, very short distance onto the body of the tool. Um, but imagine you're machining maybe a, a concave like spherical surface and being able to take big giant step overs with this tool because of this very large radius on the end. So they have the lens uh, shape, they have uh, barrel forms of different sizes, 
uh, in different diameters and uh, oval forms. And so uh, a nice variety of, of tool geometries to work with there and all of these being uh, preset, predefined in MasterCAM and ready for use. So uh, really can make a big difference. Uh, there's a lot of different toolpath types in MasterCAM that support that tool geometry now. Uh, I even tried one of the older legacy uh, tool paths like the uh, surface finish uh, contour. And it looks like it's respecting the tool very nicely. So that's it on accelerated finishing. It's a, uh, you know, it could be a huge gain depending on the application. I'm going to show one more example of this and where this would really come into play and be very handy is if you run into a case where maybe you need to machine something that has a varying taper. So I'm going to show you this part from top view. And if you look closely, there's, there's more of a taper on this side than there is over here. And so uh, it, you can't just use a conical, uh, you know, tapered tool to cut something like this because the taper is varying. And so, you, again, using that same strategy, using this waterline type tool path, using that barrel form um, tool, I get this nice tool path that stripes around there and cuts it in just a few passes. Um, one thing to note is one thing that is not uh, very automatic about this uh, strategy at this point is where you set the first cut and where you set the last cut. And those are set in the operation using the steep shallows. So you have to adjust these numbers here to kind of place the start of the tool path at the, Z, the first Z level of the tool path and the last Z level of the tool path uh, somewhat manually uh, to get that to extend uh, uh, where you want that to actually be. So when we go to back plot this from a side view, or actually better yet, we'll just use Analyze Toolpath. And so from the home menu, we'll go into Analyze Toolpath, and then I can just kind of place the tool representation here, and you'll see at this first cut, we're just getting into it. Second pass, you can see it working its way down here. And then you need to kind of go below because see if I stop at the bottom here, well, I've only got half of the finishing done. So you have to extend this below to get this tool to come all the way down to clean up. And you might even add a pass. Uh, in my other example, I, I made sure this went down even further yet. So you'll need to set the min-max uh, depths, uh, you know, to, to get what you want. But again, if it's something that's going to cut four or five times, five or six times faster, it's, it's worth the extra few minutes of programming, you know, uh, uh, for the, uh, the, the reduction in cycle time. So that's it on the accelerated finishing.